All right, now we go to the Energy Man. Uh, Clay Guida taking on Takanari Gomi, and this one right out of the gate. Now, you knew Guida was going to come with the energy, with the stamina, but the way that he was hopping around and jumping around, it's it was... called meth. It was, it, was, it was a strategy, it was a technique that I don't think anybody could prepare for. I think they even talked about it. It's like, there's no... You know, a lot of times when you're, you're fighting a, against a big guy, you want to train against other big guys, or you te- or a guy's really good at jiu-jitsu, you bring in other really good jiu-jitsu guys to, you know, uh, to make sure that you're getting the best training possible to prepare yourself for this style of fighter. Who do you bring in that yeah. it can match the, the energy and movement of a clay guida? Yeah. You can't prepare for that. Mm-hmm. And obviously, uh, a yeah. hopped up crack whore. <laughs> Go, that came out wrong. It did, did, did. There, there's a better way for that to come out. Yeah, we're not sure how that is, but anyway, uh, Gomi obviously couldn't prepare for this, and uh, who could? Clay Guida, who just literally and figuratively ran circles around yeah. Takanori Gomi. You know, it, outstanding performance by by him, and I mean, what a tough opponent. I think, I mean, this is, uh, you know, again, kudos to the UFC for even putting this fight together. I think that Gomi. You know, he came off a win. He came. He's really getting excited. Stopped his last opponent. Coming into this one, and Clay Guida, he is that benchmark. He's a guy that if you can get past this, because a lot of people have, but has been knocked down, drag out decisions. Bring out the, he brings out the best in his opponents if he does lose. This situation, amazing submission. I, I was so excited to see uh, Clay Guida finish him. Like, I think he got submission of the night. Yes, it did. You know, and, and I mean, you're right as far as how do you prepare for this, but it's also how do you fight a guy? I mean, it's like, you know, I always go back to the, the one when uh, the one uh, fight when Mark Hunt was fighting uh, Krokop, and Krokop kicked him in the head. And, I mean, he kicked him, and it was in his prime as hard as he could. And Hunt was like, what? Yeah, that's it. And, I mean, that's, that's got to just demoralize you when you have given him as, as big of a shot as you can and nothing happens. And that's like Clay Gita. He's getting hit, and it wasn't like Takanori Gomi looked bad. It's just, what are you going to do? It's like that freaking gnat that you can't hit. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and you keep you keep squatting the damn, or, or sometimes you hit it, and it still does like, what? Uh, come on, give it to me more. Yeah, yeah. And and that's the thing about Clay Gita. You have to, you know, you have to be prepared for the fight of your life. you got to be prepared for a knockdown drag out. you got to bring it just as fast and as, in, as intense as he does. And the problem sometimes with Gomi is he's cool. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like he brings it like, Junior DeSantos is cool, you know. Sometimes Frank Mir comes in way too cool. And I think you can't when you're fighting this guy because so much of it is also perception if you're going to win a decision against this guy unless you're going to finish him, and very few people do. Yeah. So kudos to, to Gita. He made the most of it. I'm glad that guy's in the UFC. I'd love to watch him fight. This is a huge one, huge victory for him. Very exciting for him. On the preliminary card, we also had Jeremy Little Heathen Stevens <coughs> defeating Marcus Davis via knockout punch <coughs> third round, and was it was surprising. knockout, and that was knockout of the night. Sixty thousand dollars to Jeremy for that one. Uh, yeah, and that one. And Davis, it looks like uh, I think you know maybe he's uh, run its course now. Yeah. He, he's trying it now. At he was at welterweight. Now he's at lightweight. He just can't really? seem to find. Uh, I can't seem to find that recipe for success, and I think the time has come. I think Davis has had a nice run, but, yeah. but he, he's clearly not able to get over on uh, some of these fighters here. You know, as far as, you know, you, you hate to, to think of it as only in marketing terms, but he was that guy, just like Chris Lytle. you got to be honest. Yeah. They put him on, you know, in cards because he's an exciting fighter. They're not necessarily saying, oh, yeah, we're, he's on the, tr- the trail to become a title for a title shot. He's not. He just fills it in. Well, they used to use Marcus Davis as that. He was the guy that can put on exciting fights. Yeah. Hey, let's throw him in there, you know, with with whoever, another striker, and this is going to be a knockdown drag out. And it's not. Remember the Hardy fight? The same thing. Oh, this is going to be great. It wasn't. And it just seems like, yeah, he's, you know, age has caught up to him. You know, he can go down and wait, but look, at it didn't work out for Jens Pulver. Paul, you know, Pulver's probably fighting at 110 right now. <laughs> Still getting knocked out. You know what I mean? And that's the thing is, you know, once you get to a certain age, or you know, you I hate to say it, but I mean, yeah, you know, your ability starts dropping, and in this situation, he just doesn't seem to be the same fighter. Yeah. And he was. It was great to see him, you know, uh, morph from just a, a solely a boxer to a true MMA guy. But it just seems like he's not that guy anymore. And this one, I mean, getting knocked out. Great fight by Jeremy Stevens. You know, we love that guy. Yeah. Now, another one we also had. Uh, it, there was going <clears throat> to be a featherweight title fight here. It was going to be uh, Jose Aldo taking on. Uh, uh, Josh Grisby, but uh, Aldo had an injury and uh, wasn't able to go, so it was oh. Grisby's option 
to fight. And he said, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll fight. I'll try, try to stay sharp, get ready for uh, when Aldo comes back. So he takes on Dustin Poirier, and uh, it was expected that Grisby was going to roll over this and then, you know, get primed and tuned for, uh, you know, his title shot with Aldo because this Grisby guy, man, he is, he yeah. is it. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, if you don't know, just ask me. I'll tell you. Yeah, he lost to Poirier there. Unanimous decision. Every round lost. Wow. So Grisby just Parisian himself. He had the title shot. He, it was just going to be postponed because of Aldo's injury, and he just comes in there and lays an do you, egg. Do you think they're going to pretend this didn't happen? You think they're going to, back in the day, go me it? Oh, I don't think they can. How could you? This is a UFC yeah. fight now. This wasn't a WEC thing. This is out there, man, yeah. and it's not cool. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not, dude. So, Grispy, talk about going back to the uh, drawing board. God, they that gotta, hurts. they got to they gotta dig up another fe- featherweight ready to uh, go. Well, because, Uriah Faber? Well, I mean... But I mean, who, that well? I mean, I yeah, know. I'm just saying. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's going to be a five round butt kicking. Maybe. But maybe they'll let let somebody fight uh, Jose Aldo just to just to show everyone what a you know butt kicker he is. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, uh, all right. So it, uh, quickly, uh, some of the other fights here. Brad Tavares defeating Phil Baroni, knockout round one, four twenty into that one, and that was a funny fight. I'm not funny, but I mean, just how quickly it turned. Yeah. And those guys were praising Phil Baroni because every time Phil comes into a fight, dude, it's like. Oh, yeah, this is his weight. Okay, 170, now he's great. Okay, now 185, now he's great. <laughs> look at him, yeah, he's really pacing himself, and he did look good. But, again, you, you have to preface it all the time with he looked good for, you know, a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and this uh, is as anticipated. We thought he'd been released before. Now he officially has been released by the UFC for, uh, from this loss, so. Uh, so that has uh, has taken place. Other ones: uh, Diego Nunez defeating Mike Brown, Daniel Roberts defeating Greg yeah, Soto. Yeah, Mike Brown, that's amazing. Yeah, and uh, Jacob Volkman defeating Antonio McKee. Split decision, and that is UFC 125.